busy people getting fit in Fulcher, Texas. Our aim is to help you look better, feel better, and perform better as quickly as possible. I'm your host, Brian White with Blue Eagle Fitness and Nutrition. Welcome. Hey, what's up, Clancy? How are you? Hey, Brian. How's it going? You look super nice today. I bathed. <laughs> this is beyond, this is, you know, hair's done, dress on. I know. I know. What's going on? Something's yeah. weird. Something you, weird's happening. You didn't make it clear to me earlier that you did not dress up for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this podcast and I have another Zoom meeting after this where people act more professional dressing like what than what I normally do for the gym podcast is a t-shirt. But so I decided to shake it up a bit. <laughs> Good. I like it. Hey, today we are going to talk about meditation. So you are going to teach us everything you do to meditate. Well, that's going to be short because <laughs> I don't meditate as don't far meditate as I know. Okay. As far as you as know. As far as I know. Okay. So we'll talk about what meditation is and at least we'll talk about at least four ways to meditate. Okay. Uh, and, well, and maybe one of those you happen to do without knowing that it's an actual form of meditation. Perhaps I do meditate and I'm not aware of it. Okay. But when you say meditate, I think of this. Um, sure. And that's a, um, that is a form of meditation. That is definitely a form of meditation. Not the only form. Um, that is definitely a form of meditation. Okay. So what are the forms of meditation? Then? Right. So the first that we'll talk about um, is, I just refer to it specifically as box breathing. I think we talked about this last week. Um, when I was struggling with uh, panic attacks and I was using box breathing to, to get my get control back over my body. But box breathing and in more than just box breathing, in, as a reminder, box breathing is we, we breathe in for, for example, three seconds, hold our breath for three seconds, release for three seconds, hold for three seconds, and then can we can repeat that. And whether it's two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, some people get into rectangular breathing <laughs> where it's <laughs> breathe in for six seconds, hold for two seconds, breathe out for six seconds, hold. For, it doesn't like, I'm not here to split hairs on exactly which is which, but you get the, you get the idea. But with meditation, we're not just going to follow this breathing exercise like we talked about last week. We are also going to pay attention to our breath. So when I breathe in, I am focused on how the air feels going across my lips. And then as I'm holding my breath, I'm focused on how my lips feel when my mouth is closed and how they feel touching each other. And then when I breathe out, I'm going to focus on how the breath feels going across my lips. And when I hold again, I'm going to focus on how my lips feel touching one another. So that's called box breathing. And we just focus on our breath. And the reason why we focus on our breath is that your your mind is going to focus on something just telling you to clear your mind don't think about anything well that's not going to work <laughs> you know our minds are built to solve problems and so they're always trying to figure out what the next problem is for them to solve when we focus on our breath there's well that's boring exactly that is <laughs> The exact reason why we are focused on our breath. We don't, we're not trying to solve Rubik's Cube, right? We're trying to just <laughs> think about something that is completely boring. Okay. Um, what do you think, Clancy? What do you think about that method? Yeah, I love it. I mean, I love the breathing thing. And honestly, this is, I guess I do in a way, could this be considered? Because when I work out, I can't think of anything else. 
Yep. Besides getting that, like today, I couldn't think of anything else except getting those five wall balls. And then after that, I was going to do my, I'm modifying right now because of my back, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wasn't thinking of solving other problems. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know? Lots of people have view working out as their meditative experience because it's it's really hard. Today's workout was so beautiful, right? It was a, a 35 minute time cap, 400 meter run, then 15 rounds of five wall balls, three burpees, one heavy power clean. And then we're going to repeat all that. So we're going to go back on the 400 meter run and then we're going to do the 15 rounds again. And if you break up each run, if each run takes you two and a half minutes, which is a 10 minute mile pace, and you do every round, every minute on the minute thereafter, you're going to finish with about 30 seconds to spare. Uh, and it was just a beautiful workout because there's nothing, you're not going to get overused, right? When we do 150 straight, we did 150 wall balls today, but it was broken up into 30 rounds of five right? You can do five wall balls. You can do three burpees. You can do one power clean, right. right? And that was a, but no one was thinking about work or kids or paying the bills or any other stress or right while doing today's workout. Mm -hmm. That's true. I, I love those kind of workouts. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was challenging, but I loved it. Also, one of the things that I do and I guess I didn't really consider this meditative but I guess meditation can really be anything that you're focused on and so in the mornings I read um, I read a devotion from a devotional guide it's called it's called my utmost for his highest it's Oswald Chambers I read that and then I reference whatever scripture I go into my actual bible not my phone app and I read and I'd focus on that. So in a way that is a meditation, but when you, when people say, Oh, I meditate, I, I for some reason, I automatically think of like this, just sure. me sitting, breathing. And I guess that is meditating. I guess what I'm trying to say is I do have meditative things that I do. It okay. just doesn't look like this. Well, or this or this or this or whatever you're supposed to do with your finger. I don't know what to do with my hands. I think you're doing great. <laughs> but the the second method, so we talked about breathing and paying attention to our breath. The second is visualization or guided imagery. So um, lots of people use this to think about when they have either a presentation coming up or like my kids who play sports, you know, they go through a visualization practice. And some people get this a little mixed up. They think about visualizing success or what it's like to win, right? Um, well, that's the that's actually the easy part. You have to do the work. <laughs> and so visualization is all about, let's say you have to give a speech, um, a five-minute speech. Um, visualization would be sitting in a quiet room, closing your eyes and not practicing your speech, but going over the speech in your head as though in visualizing you're standing up on stage, you're in front of the microphone, you have the audience in front of you. And, you know, thinking about maybe something goes wrong, the lights go out, the power goes out, or you have a baby in the back crying, you know, how would you visualizing how to respond to those um, possible or potential negative impacts um, and seeing yourself work through them and being successful. So not just skipping to the end of, hey, yeah, great speech, but you being successful handling the situation. Have you ever done that? Yes, I had a tennis coach who had me read the inner game of tennis and if Ooh, any one of you guys all time great book all time so great good. Book. and they just redid it uh, not too many years ago I have the original version from like the 80s that I bought so anyway they just redid the foreword in that book but it talks about that 
imagining yourself out there. And then, and not only that, but imagine if you double faulted, you know, are you going to throw your body language? Is your yeah. shoulders going to sag? If you look at professionals, when they double fault, they don't even react. They just go to the next yeah. side of the court and go serve, you know, that sort of thing. So I had to start practicing that in tennis because I struggled with that. Struggled with double faulting? <laughs> no, I struggled with my attitude yeah. showing up on the court. And so my coach recognized that and had me read that book. Yeah. And, and that's where I learned how to do that. Random tip cool. of information. That book uh, was written before a lot of the research was done. And basically all the research shows that everything in that book is right. <laughs> Even though it was written from one coach's perspective, from his own experiences. But they, those experiences were spot on. They were, is being a casual observer of your situation, basically. Yep. yep. Perfect. Our third way to meditate, I do this one at, at uh, night when I'm trying to sleep. Um, I call it mindful walking. Um, and so what I do is I play, I, I, I'm laying down in bed trying to go to sleep. My mind's got a million things going on, of course. Uh, to get rid of some of those thoughts, I play a round of golf in my head. So I visualize myself on the first tee. I change the courses up, but you know, let's say it's Meadowbrook, which is a long as par four, dog leg left. You're you're on the tee box. You're looking right at sand, and you're trying to hit it past the tree that blocks you on the left. Uh, and so I'm visualizing myself on the first tee box, and visualizing my swing and hitting the ball. I'm walking to the ball. After I hit it, I pull out my seven iron. I'm now going to hit a 165 yard shot into the green. I visualize that. And I basically, I play a round of golf in my head. That is mindful walking. Hmm. It's a great way. It's a great technique to try to go to sleep. You will be amazed. Uh, other people who, who do this, uh, especially with golf, um, don't usually make it past the third hole before there is. <laughs> so what other things, cause I'm not a golfer. So yeah. if I did that, it would yeah. be, so I, it, I don't know. What yeah, else could yeah. I do? Yeah. You don't want a, a sport like tennis, um, which is too fast paced, too energetic, but you could go on a hike. You could, you know, in your mind, you could go on a hike. You could go on a long bike ride and, and it usually works better if you're just reliving an experience that you've had multiple times. Um, so gotcha. you know, many, many people listening to this podcast go on lots of hikes. Many people ride their bikes long distances or run uh, long distances. Those runs, those hikes, um, those bike rides, you know, revisualizing um, those experiences go a long way toward calming the body. Uh, and in this case, I use it to help me go to sleep. Awesome. I love that. And then our fourth is uh, called body scans or um, uh, progressive relaxations. I actually learned this technique when I was 14 years old playing football. It was insane. Um, so um, first of all, you have to go back geez, 32 years. <laughs> you have to go back 32 years for this story. So what, what 1991, that's how far back we're going with this story. That's it. 1991. There was no one on the cutting edge of anything psychologically in sports. Right. I mean, <laughs> in my ninth grade football coach, cool thing about our ninth grade football coach, he went um, three and a half years of undefeated seasons. So these, you can't recruit. He's just a small town. You get the kids that you get. Um, as eighth graders, not, all, not everyone went undefeated. And then certainly when we went into high school, we never went undefeated. But for ninth grade, he could get the best out of all of his players. And for over three years, his teams went undefeated. And I swear, one of the ways that he got us all focused before every game were these uh, progressive relaxation body scans. And so imagine a 50, 60, 
14, 15 year olds, um, full shoulder pads and helmet. And he says, everybody lay down. And so you got this locker room and people are in the showers. I mean, the locker room is not that big. <laughs> and you're just laying <laughs> over on, on, on the floor, on the table, on the training table, on benches. You're just, but you have to lay down. You can't sit. You have to lay down. And he would start with tighten your feet. Relax. I'm doing this right now as you're saying yeah, it. You can do it. Tighten your feet. Relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Tighten your calves, relax. Tighten your calves, relax. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And we would go all the way up, all the way to your quads. Tighten your quads, tighten your butt, tighten your abs, tighten your chest, tighten your shoulders, tighten your triceps, tighten your biceps, tighten your hands, tighten your neck, tighten your jaw. And every time, and, and you know, he would, I mean, and you can see just how long that just took me. I mean, we just did two body parts and we, in his, we did like 15. And so I mean, you're spending like 20 minutes <laughs> going through so while all the other football teams are like getting fired up and, <laughs> you know, we're doing meditative <laughs> practices, you could hear a, you know, a, a, a pin drop in this, in this room of 60 guys, 60, 14 and 15 year olds, no less. But I swear it works. Um, it got everyone in this. And the, while we're doing that, we are, we're actually going through visualization of, you know, you're playing your position you're thinking about how you're, you know, the plays that you're going to make, actually making a tackle, actually making an interception. I played defense, so I was always on the thinking defensively. But you're actively meditating on and visualizing the success that you're about to have on the football field. So, yeah, so that's our body scan and progressive relaxations. I do, I still do this. I do this at night um, if I mix up my mindful walking um, instead of playing golf, I will do these, pipe my feet, relax, <laughs> pipe my feet, relax, breathe. breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And that's exactly the way he would say it to me. Um, but <laughs> that's, yeah, <so> that's awesome. <laughs> that's, I wonder where he is now. I mean, way ahead. We should do time. that. Way ahead. We should do that as one of our warm ups. As one of our warm ups. Jim. Okay, everybody. Okay, we'll down. give it a shot. There we we'll go. Shot. We'll talk to Bruce about that. Let's see if, he, if we can get Bruce on board. We got everybody on board, I think. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. Those are cool. some good techniques. I like that. So those are our four meditative practices that we can we can do to relax a little bit. Uh, you know, some of these we can do during the day, you know, our box breathing where we're focused on our breath. Pull a little thing, pull out your phone, pull out your phone. Uh, start a timer for four minutes. I mean, it doesn't have to be long. Just and spend four minutes doing box breathing focused on your breath, or spend four minutes doing the the body scan, uh, progressive relaxations, starting at your feet, working your way up, and however far you get in five minutes is how far you get. Like, don't you don't have to pressure yourself into finishing on time on time. You know, but th these are great techniques that we can use during the day um, to just bring us back to who we are and not getting always caught up in uh, the hustle going on around us. That is definitely needed. Definitely needed. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me, Clancy. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to go... Uh lay down and tighten my feet and my calves and my quads i love it so i'll check you later <laughs> okay. thank you have a great all right day. all right you too thanks for Bye. you can get every episode of busy people getting fit wherever you listen to your podcast or on youtube you can also reach us at busypeoplegettingfit.com until next time thank you for listening